raining bricks in, and uh, you can see they're falling in and synchronization between that. That screen right there is just the, the host phone right there. But um, if you have multiple phones, then you can kind of drop bricks and you see them falling together. And you know, it's just a proof of concept for the synchronization between them. The bricks is kind of a simple thing just to show this here. We're here to talk to you today about a framework for multi-user concurrent augmented reality. So what is a framework? A framework is a way of connecting disparate software components to meet the particular needs of an end user case. In this case, it's multi-user AR. Well, the reason we approached multi-user was in order to design something that has more wide-ranging applications than just single player. So you might have seen like Pokemon Go, which is kind of gimmicky. The idea behind this is to create something where you can bring it into the classroom and truly unleash the potential of modern computing technology. For our capstone project, we created a mobile application on iOS devices, and we leveraged convolutional neural networks in order to create this application. And the purpose of it is to be able to compute body dimensions given an input photo. So I'm going to take a photo of Serena. And as you can see on the output, we get Serena's measurements of her shoulder, arms, hips, and legs, as well as the pose that shows the joints of her body. So the main problem that we're trying to solve is that MIDI keyboards are not accessible to the visually impaired. So we wanted to come up with a very low cost or uh, no cost solution to this problem. So we came up with a screen reading application that uh, uses a bit of OCR and smart assistive uh, audio to guide the user through a uh, nice user experience to perform a specific functionality for their keyboard. Right now we're on the song screen and if the user wants to be able to record they would first want to Press double tap to to the so that they can hear the Press available actions the that they want. Press one to return to the master and screen. once they know what they want, they can kind of navigate through and feel, okay, this is the record button, let me click record. And then after a few seconds, the application would uh, read the keyboard screen and output uh, what's going on. So our project is about um, fiber. So it's basically um, there is uh, like a fiber. So fiber is usually um, carry the light and the information just um, along the line. So it just uh, travel the light just um, um, inside the fiber. But our project, um, we want to use the fiber, and um, we want to use this fiber and then reflect the um, light out of fiber. So um, because of the reflective out of fiber, we can use this one as a spectrometer. So if we use a laser, and then um, we create some kind of like a pattern or the hole inside the like, core of a fiber. So in the core of a fiber, if we um, create some pattern, um, the refract index of fiber is um, going to be changed, and that makes some um, fiber um, light uh, reflect fiber reflect light out of fiber. This is like a demonstration of um, our project. So we are injecting the light, and then as you can see, this one is um, focused as a chirping effect, and if you see the other side, this one is not focused because of the blazing effect. Now it brings out to our goal, which is to build a real-time gesture recognition system that works on low-cost hardware. And when it comes to the groups of uh, the classes of gesture, we're interesting. We're interesting on a total of 52 classes, and these 52 classes can be roughly divided into th three different groups. The, fir the first group involves like simple. Uh, finger movement, uh, and the second group involves uh, the movement with the wrist, and the third movement uh, often requires the interaction with the object. Uh, the reason we choose these 52 classes is that previous works have already demonstrated that these two 52 classes are, com are, they are very common in daily lives, and so that it can be used for rehabilitation purpose for pa patients with amputees. So a jerk is the rate of change of acceleration, and if the driver is driving really rough, there will be a lot of jerk, and that will be very uncomfortable for passengers. So we are trying to make a device that can quantify jerk, and uh, that can measure jerk, so that it can be quantified into comfort, so that it's more comfortable for passengers, and it can be used to assess the skills of a driver. And as you can see, the passengers are blindfolded, so their visual perception couldn't, like, their judgment and we had them write down values of comfort with respect to certain actions the driver was doing. So here you have the fast acceleration occurring and you can see the jerk experienced by the vehicle and above you can see the uh, comfort that was quantified by the passengers on a scale of 0 to 10. When you go back uh, you can look at the recent trips 
and then you can have the data of the trips come up and then it'll show you the average comfort, the highest comfort and lowest comfort of, of the whole trip. So our final design contains both software and hardware. So this is an example of our software front end. You can see those bars are the temperature of FPGAs and we can choose each board and you can see the graph being updated. You can just use the software external front end to control the IPs in, in, in the FPGA. For example, if you see the FPGA is board one, I can simply click one button here, and be, which is reset. And after clicking, you can see the board gets, gets reprogrammed to the original con configuration, proving that we can uh, reset, reset FPGA. The other thing I'd like to show is that if we set a temperature threshold for, for board, meaning that the board will be reset if the temperature uh, exceeds the value that so we set it. And if we heat, use the heat dryer to increase the temperature of, of, of the FPGA, and as temperature increase, that's the basic, it's the real time value. And after it exceeds 60, you can see the board gets reset as well. So the topic of our project is called cancer. So what we would like to do is we want to find the tumor location inside a mouse body. And um, the technology we use currently is called bioluminescent tomography. It's, it works like, uh, the fir firstly we inject some reporter genes into, into, into a mouse and those genes can make the tumor, tumor cell glows. And they, they could pr produce some visible light and we could use a really sensitive det detector to detect the light distribution around the mouse surface. And we use this light distribution as an input of our organism and trying to reconstruct the tumor location and the tumor shape of the uh, inside the mouse. We designed Remagellin, uh, which is an undergrad ECE course selection tool. When remaking uh, Magellan in uh, Magellan 2.0, which we named as, named as Columbus, we created a better UI and we provided analytics and all kind of data for the uh, courses that we wanted to take. The main issues we faced uh, well, may, uh, while we used Magellan in our, in our undergrad is that it didn't give us enough information about the courses that we wanted to take. We also had to we often had to refer to like different sources like Reddit and talk to our seniors uh, to get an idea on whether a course is uh, uh, for the best fit. Like we can see that the, for each course we tell them the workload, instructor rating and the course rating along with the fact that what the popularity of the course has been over these years. Uh, other features of the uh, new system is the new UI which allows you to add courses to the shortlist and from the shortlist they can drag and drop a course into a semester so if the semester is green uh, the course can be added to that semester and this allows students to actually play around with the courses uh, however they like uh, really easily we also calculate the ECE and CEAB requirements which tell the student about if they can graduate or not on the same page so they can so it's a, it's a very flexible uh, way for you to design uh, for you to design your uh, curriculum. Neural network has been a big topic over the course of years and artificial intelligence has been developing really fast. With more and more neurons and ways added to neural network, we're currently consuming a lot of powers, a large amount of memory, and the neural networks are getting slowing down. So therefore, we, we need to come up with a solution that can reduce the amount of power memory usage and we can increase the inference speed of the neural network. We select a larger application, which is face aging. Mainly, the generator will give an image of a person's current face and generate the, the, the person's face from different ages. So this is the model with 80% sparsity and floating point 16. Um, here's the input image, which will just be the four of us and our professor. And here's the generated image from our younger age to our senior age. Then the left part is like the male version of the progression, and the right part will be the female pro like version of the progression. Our project is basically autonomous warehouse logistics. So we are trying to automate warehouses uh, using uh, autonomous means, which are drones. So since all of these tasks are repetitive, this can be easily mimicked by a drone. We had to divide our entire uh, warehouse into zones, and each drone is responsible for each zone. And this was done uh, because uh, each drone might be better at doing something. Say, for example, picking up packages from a height and dropping it off. So it, it separates, like, you can have multiple different drones communicating with one another, each having their own speciality. So our project consists of 
uh, achieving rendezvous with a swarm of vehicles that are not allowed to um, talk to each other. What rendezvous means is that they're supposed to, so all the robots are supposed to converge to a single point, and they should do this with only information that they gather locally, and they can't communicate with each other, which means that they can't, for example, uh, agree on the single point where they, they meet, and the, 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 the kind of idea is that they move in such a way that they all end up converging to this, this single point. What you'll see is that they'll start, and they'll start by looking for another robot, and once they see one, they'll start going towards it, and they use the only information that they use to, to generate these trajectories is what they see on the camera that's on the robot. They start chasing one another and, and eventually they all end up being in the same position. And that's the feed that's on board the robots.